What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion new feature video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the path tracing in twin motion in a little bit more detail so we can see exactly what benefits it gets, how to use the program, other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you remember, um, the preview version of twin motion 2022 was just released and inside of it, they added the ability to use path tracing in order to toggle the way that this renders out so that you can get a more realistic rendering. So path tracing, if you remember, is basically um, the engine actually tracing the paths of light and actually calculating out what they would do for a more realistic result. So I will link to the release notes about this in the notes down below. There are a couple limitations about this that you should know about. So um, probably the biggest thing is this is going to require two things having to do with your graphics card, right? The first thing it's going to require is it's going to require a DirectX 12 compatible graphics card and it's going to require more video memory. And so it's only going to work if A, your GPU supports ray tracing and B, if your GPU has at least eight megabytes of RAM. If those conditions are not met, then it's gonna activate DirectX 11 and you're not gonna be able to use the path tracer. So note that there is an option in the preferences panel in order to switch. So under the settings right here, there is an option for graphic hardware support where you can toggle this manually, or you can at least try to do that. I've had at least one instance where I opened this up and this option didn't show in here, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening behind the scenes. But just know that there's some computer things that are required in order for this to work. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at this and just kind of get an idea of what kind of benefit this is gonna give us. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna take a look at what the path tracer can do. We're gonna do that in an exterior application because there's a lot more light on the exterior right here. And so it's just gonna give us a better result. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop in an HDRI Sky Dome real quick. Um, something that's gonna give us a lot of light. All right, so we've got a Sky Dome in here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at the reflections right now. So if you look in this glass at the moment, and this may be a better example, and so you're not really getting a whole lot in the way of reflections coming off of this light right now. Like you're getting a little bit, but it's not super realistic, right? Well, the whole point of the path tracer is it's going to be more realistic with what the light does. And so let's take a look at this piece of glass right here. And so first thing we want to do is we're going to jump into our settings and under our renderer, we want to enable the path tracer. You can also click on the button right here to do that. And so if I click in here, what you're going to notice is this is going to come through and it's going to actually simulate what light is going to do inside of this scene. But first off, notice how the result isn't very good, right? And I'm going to toggle this back off for a second and fly in. So first off, the result isn't very good. And so part of the reason the result isn't very good is because I have this set to a very low resolution right now, right? But I do want you to note that you are getting now a substantial reflection off of this piece of glass that you weren't getting before. You can see the tree, you can see part of the chair that's behind this, other things like that. And so what we can do is we can use the presets in here to set this to different levels of quality. Right, so this is going to give me a higher level of quality than the other result is going to give me. But notice how it's taking longer. And basically what this does is these three presets basically set the number of samples per pixel as well as the max number of bounces that this is going to calculate. And so when it does that, what it's doing is it's basically calculating more bounces of light and taking more samples for every pixel of the screen. So it's running more calculations is what it's doing. So you can use any of those three presets when working with the path tracer, or you can manually enter a number of samples in order to manually control the number of bounces and pixels that this calculates. One of the things I want to note is it's going to be a lot faster working here in the outside than it is on the inside right now, um, just because we have more light. So if I was to move like into this space right here and then activate the path tracer, it would take a lot longer in order to calculate because there's just less light rays inside of the scene for it to calculate. But um, another thing that I wanna note with the path tracer is generally speaking, it's a good idea if you wanna move around inside of your scene to toggle the path tracer off until you get your camera where you want it to be. Then you can just click on the button right here in order to toggle that back on.
And so one thing you may notice is if you do jump over into the path tracer right here, your image comes out a little bit dimmer, or in this case, a lot dimmer. And so it's not really a big deal, but one of the things that you can do is you can actually adjust that by going into your settings and under your lighting settings with the path tracer active, you can actually adjust the exposure of the image. And that's something that's not going to make this go back in and resample everything, which is really nice. So notice how this sampled everything and you're getting the light reflecting off of this wall, which we'll talk about in a second. But if I was to adjust my exposure right here to something like two, notice how it's going to bring the brightness of my image up. So what you can do is you can adjust the brightness of those images by adjusting the exposure and your render settings after the fact. And so then um, you can kind of set this to whatever you want. And I want to talk in a second about the denoising, but first I want to talk about how to save um, a view that's going to be something that's going to be path traced. We're just going to do that by clicking into our media settings and under image, we just want to create a new image, right? So we're going to click right here to create a new image. And in this case, this new image is going to be path traced. Right, And so you can tell that an image is path traced um, by looking in your media settings right here and you can see the little box on the corner that indicates that it's path traced. But you can come in here and you can set whether that's going to be path traced or not just by going into your settings and just toggling if your path tracing is going to be on and off in that image. So notice how when I change that, now this image is not going to be path traced. Um, if I did want that to be path traced, I could just toggle that on. And then if I jump back and look at it, you can see how that got saved as a part of the image. So you can actually set if different images and locations are going to be path traced just by adjusting those in your settings right here. And so now what I want to do just real quick um, is I want to talk a little bit about the denoising settings. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and let's move inside the building right here. We're going to jump back into our settings. So we're just going to quit media mode. And so notice how when we quit media mode, um, this is going to jump us back into trying to path trace this image. And one thing you might notice is it's really noisy right now. But then after a while, when it comes through and it samples all this stuff, then it's going to become a lot clearer, right? And the reason why is because this has a setting in here for the denoiser. And so what the denoiser is going to do is after your rendering is complete, it's going to go through and it's going to remove the noise automatically using an algorithm. And so one thing I want you to be aware of though is when you use the denoiser, notice how, um, especially along like these edges, right here, the more noise there is, the more this is gonna go through with the algorithm and try to like sort that out. But when it does that, it's going to basically cause these distortions in your image. And so you can lessen those distortions. Um, if you were to jump to like high or something like that, um, or in this case, maybe if we were to jump up to like 128. So if I was to jump this up to 128, it's gonna go through and it's gonna resample all of this um, and you're going to get a better result because there's going to be less noise because it does more sampling. The trade-off there though is the more samples per pixel you do and the more bounces you do the longer this is going to take. And so while this works the other thing I want to talk about is you can toggle your emissive lights on and off. This is basically going to give you the ability to calculate if emissive lights are actually going to affect the lighting in our scene. So if you remember some materials in twin motion are set as emissive, meaning they emit light. And so this button allows us to set if the emissive materials are actually calculated in a scene. So if you turn this off, what that means is that means that the path tracer isn't gonna um, trace the light that comes out of an emissive material, meaning you'll have better performance, but they won't actually contribute to your light. So you can toggle that on and off using this setting. But you can see how we're getting a little bit smoother result right here. Note that you're going to get a lot more noise in a low light situation like this one than you would in an exterior just because there's less light in the scene for this to do the calculations with. So that should give you an idea of how the path tracer works. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. If you've tested it, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.